Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about teams and labels within AppRite. So we'll talk about what they are, some of the main differences between the two, and we'll also talk about when you should maybe use one over the other. So with this video, there is also a article linked up in the video description that I wrote. And if you wanna follow along with that, it's basically the written version of what I'm saying here, along with the visuals that we're gonna use in this video, or at least some of the main ones that I wanna reference here. So. Let's go ahead and just start with a question. What are teams and labels? Well, teams and labels just give us a way to categorize and group users together. And this allows us to set permissions to resources at the team and label level instead of at the individual user level. So by being able to do this, we're able to group users together and manage permissions to resources like documents, files, and functions in a much more efficient way. So the way this works is we create teams and labels in our application then instead of assigning permission levels like read and write access to each user, we just assign permissions to a team or a label and then add a user to a particular team or a label to a particular user. And from that point on, a user from there will inherit all the permissions from that team or label. So by doing this, we're able to manage permissions at the group level instead of trying to manage permissions for each individual user. So if we ever don't want a user to have certain permissions to a resource, we can simply remove the user from the team or remove the label from the user and that user will lose all of those permissions that they originally inherited. So when looking at this picture here, we can see two teams and what kind of access the users have on each team. Everyone on team one can create and read while everyone on team two can only create and delete. So that's how we're managing what team can do what. Now for labels, we can see which label has access to each resource. And then these users that have the associated label will have access to that particular resource. So in this case, permission is given through the label. Now, this doesn't mean that we don't have the ability to set permission at the individual user level. This is just a much more effective way to manage groups of users. Now let's look at some real world examples of when we may need something like teams and labels to help us accomplish a particular task. Let's imagine that we're building the next social media application and we need a system where we have moderators who have a higher level of permissions than a standard user within our application. So these moderators are in charge of maybe flagging or deleting a post that doesn't meet community guidelines, violates a policy, whatever they need to do as moderators. So first, the original post owner would have permission over their own post so they can create, update, and delete their own post. This is nothing new. But from here, we also would need to create a team of moderators and give them permission over all the posts in the application. So now the owner has permission over a post and so does everybody on the moderators team. And this is how we can maybe manage content in this application. So this is just one example of where teams can be used in a real application to accomplish a task like this. Another example we can take a look at is a streaming service like Amazon Video. So how would we give users access to movies or shows that they paid for? So for this, what we could do is simply create a label for every single movie, give those labels read access, and then once a user pays for that movie or show, we can simply add that label to the user and they would have access to that specific movie or show. So this can all still technically be done without teams and labels, but it can get messy very fast when trying to manage permissions for every user and try to figure out who has what level of access and go through and update those. So this is where teams and labels make this a lot more easier and efficient. So let's jump into the details over how teams and labels actually work. So teams and labels can actually accomplish much of the same thing. However, there are some technical and fundamental differences between the two. So when you're trying to decide which one you should use, it really comes down to your specific use case needs and your personal preference in how you want to build things out. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and take a look at those technical differences and maybe give you some examples and point you in the right direction to maybe help understand where one thrives over the other. So let's go ahead and start with teams first. So teams are designed to group users together, allowing for shared access to resources within an application. So for example, something like Discord or Slack, these applications are a place where we need to create these teams, maybe invite users. Uh, this is where teams really thrive. And one of the key differences between teams and labels is the ability to actually set roles within a team and assign permissions to those roles. So this means all users in a team will inherit permissions from that specific team, such as read access to all messages in a chat room, but they will also inherit permission from their role as well. So 
if we want to have maybe a moderator in a chat room we can give everyone read and write access but we can give a moderator uh, some kind of permission to maybe delete other users messages so this is great when we want to have the ability to allow granular control over what team members can do based on their role within a team so roles play a big part in teams now, moving on to labels, labels are essentially custom tags that we can assign to each user. And just like teams, we can also assign permissions to specific labels. Now, labels can be used in a similar manner to teams, but they're much more lightweight and flexible in their approach. So with labels, instead of grouping users together like a team, we simply add labels to users and distribute out permissions that way. So because of this, I like to think of the example of maybe managing access behind a paywall for some kind of content. So let's say we had like a digital library that has eBooks or courses on a platform like Udemy. So what we could do is use labels for something like this and simply attach a label to every single product or resource that we want to hide. Once a user pays, we simply add that label to the user and the user has access to whatever they paid for. Now, if this was a subscription based website, what we could do is simply remove a label from a user once they stop paying their monthly subscription. And at that point, the user would no longer have access to that content. Okay, so in the next steps, we're actually going to go through and actually learn how to create teams and labels and assign permissions based on those. But before we do that, I want to quickly just highlight this overall process. So this is a four step process for both. And with this, we can just go ahead and start at one. So we first need to create a team or a label. Then we need to go ahead and assign permissions to that team or label. And then in step three, we simply either add a user to a team or we add a label to a user. So this is where things kind of differ. And then in step four, the user simply inherits the permissions from the team they are on or the label that they have been given. Okay, so in this next section, we're going to jump into the AppRite console and actually create some teams and labels and assign some permissions to them. So this way you're able to test this out right away, try it yourself and just see how things work. Okay, so from the console, the first thing we need to do is just go ahead and go to the auth tab. And from here, we can just go ahead and select teams go ahead and click create team. And at this point, we just need to give our team a name. So we're just gonna go ahead and assign it a name, go ahead and click create. And from here, we can just add users to the team. So we'll go ahead and select members, go ahead and click on create member. And from here, we just need to add in the member email. Now, the name, this is optional. We don't need to add this. If the user already exists, it'll be added. And then we can also assign a role. This is also something that's not required, but something that we can add. Okay, so that's it for creating a team. Now let's go ahead and test this out by giving this team some permissions. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use a collection as an example. So we're gonna go into the settings tab of this collection that I have. We'll go down to the permissions section. And when we click add role, we're gonna have an option to select a team. So from here, we're gonna see the new mods team that we just created. All we need to do is go ahead and simply select that and set permissions for that specific team. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it create, read and update permissions. So now everybody on this team is gonna have these permissions. So if we wanna go ahead and actually give a specific role within the team some permissions, for this we're gonna to need to go ahead and select custom permission. So in here what we need to do is add in the team ID along with the role name. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this in. I already had that copied. We'll just go ahead and add in the super admin role go ahead and add that. And this is how we're able to actually give that specific role permissions. So in this case, the super admin will have full create, read, update, and delete permissions. Now creating labels and setting permissions to those labels is actually very similar to Teams. We still go to the auth tab. In this case though, we select a user. So I'll go ahead and just click on a user and every single user is gonna have this labels section. So in here, you're gonna see some suggested labels that we can select. In my case, I'm just gonna go ahead and create my own label called subscriber. And we're gonna go ahead and add this to this user and then set the permissions for this. So back in the collection here, we're gonna use the same example here. We'll click on add a role and we'll just click on label and we'll add in the subscriber label. And then we can just set the permissions for this label. So it's as simple as that. At this point, we're gonna act like this is some kind of product that a user can view once they subscribe. So we're just gonna add the read label and that's it for labels. 
Now, from a technical perspective, there is one more thing that I wanted to mention, and that is how labels and teams are used when it comes to the SDK. So it's important to note that labels can only be created and modified from the console or server SDK. You cannot create labels from the client side SDK or modify them while teams can be created and modified from both the client and server SDKs. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave me feedback in the comment section and be sure to subscribe to the AppRite YouTube channel.